Okay, I'm making this quick video. I'm in a very uncomfortable squatting position because there's really nowhere good to place the camera. I'm visiting me grandmums again. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm doing this because this was, like, the easiest way to do it. I'm not quirky or anything. I'm not like the other content creators. I don't have that vibe. I'm just lazy. Alright, so I wanted to make this quick video because... I got a couple things on my mind, so lately I've been, I don't know if you would say getting more paranoid about my privacy and access to data and all that, but lately it's a, it's a couple of things. Like, first of all, I want privacy. I don't want these corporations tracking my every move and they know me better than myself and they know like how I'm going to act or what I'm going to buy. Uh, I'm tired of that, so I never consented to it. I'm kneeling now because the <laughs> legs are tired. <laughs> And uh, I, I, I don't work out anymore, so no leg day, no arm day, no whatever day. Anyways, yeah, I'm just tired of these companies taking my data, and I never consented to it, and no one's protecting us in the U.S. You know, there are some privacy-related laws, I think, in California, mostly the EU, because lately what I've been doing is I've been deleting every single one of my accounts and all the data related to it. So in order to do that, it's a, it's a lot of work, let me tell you, fellas. So for a lot of companies that are consumer-oriented, they'll have a delete account button that you press, and then you confirm it somehow, and then it's just all gone right away. That's awesome. Uh, other companies will have uh, a link somewhere in the privacy policy or the terms of service and then when you click there there's a little section under either for california or for the gdpr data request stuff and then usually there's an automated form and when you click on it you fill in the information you click the button and then usually it deletes it now sometimes they might respond with an email and say can you respond with this data to confirm that it's you and then they'll delete it now, there are some companies where even if you do that, they don't delete it. Papa John's and Voodoo, you guys get an F for data privacy. Uh, Papa John's of all places. Anyways, uh, Origin and Sony are very difficult because if you go to that section, they require you to use the live chat. But for Sony, there's no one available. And then for Origin, you're waiting forever because there's no one there. So they also get an F. But yeah, there's some companies that you just can't delete your data for, and I'm not naive. In this day and age, I know that even if you submit this, these data requests, data deletion requests, right to be forgotten, whatever you want to call it, um, I know that might not necessarily delete your data, you know? Like, they might delete your account, but then they might just keep all that data because it's valuable. I get that. But I would like to kind of tie up loose ends for 2023, and I've been going through, and I have hundreds of accounts using different emails. Each of them have different passwords. I'm, <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, yeah, I've been, I'm kind of sparing right when it comes to that kind of stuff. So it's been a pain and uh, there are a few accounts where I go back and they then delete it and it's kind of weird. Uh, but yeah, so I've been doing that and in my journey, you know, like, I hate Discord because it doesn't delete your data. So if you delete your account, it doesn't delete any text that you sent if you have a bunch of dms you have thousands of message messages with one person let's say and delete your account all it does is it removes your username it doesn't actually delete those messages as far as i know it used to be like that maybe it changed with microsoft buying discord but i don't know probably not so also the founder the original founder of discord was a super shady guy who did the same thing of violating people's privacy, lying about not selling user account data, and then selling it, so, you know. <laughs> also, I hate Microsoft, too, anyways. So I've been going through, and I've been deleting these DMs one by one. Uh, I know there's there are plugins, but the plugins uh, make API calls, and if you make too many API calls in a short amount of time, your account gets banned, so I'm like, I don't want to take the risk. Now, that may have changed. I'm using outdated data. I don't know. Also, the blue lights from my microphone. But yeah, so I've been going through and manually deleting. And here's some shortcuts I learned. Uh, let's say you have 
a long chat history with somebody, you want to get to the beginning instead of scrolling all the way up, you can sort your messages before, there's a before a certain date, just click on any date and then change the years. So like go down one year at a time until no more messages appear and then go down, you know, one month at a time until no messages appear and then click that message, it'll be near the top. Uh, also, if you hold shift and hover your mouse over the message, a little trash icon will show up and you can just click that to delete the message. So that's what I've been doing. I'm getting kind of tired because I've been doing it for a long time. <laughs> and it's not guaranteed that the messages are actually gone. It might be gone from my end or the other person's end, but Discord might actually just be maintaining all that data. So we never know. It could be all in vain. That said, uh, lately, I've been getting tired. So going back to what I was saying before, it's a little bit of paranoia, sure. Uh, it's a little bit of concern for my privacy, sure. It's also the ethics and, and morals of it. Like TikTok, I deleted my account because TikTok is pure trash. Now there's wholesome good content on there for sure. But if you just go to TikTok and don't log in and look at the front page, it is a garbage fire and it's actively ruining a generation of kids. So. The reason why I used it, I didn't consume TikToks very rarely, but the reason why I did it is I do games coverage. So when I make like a short preview, I used to call it one minute previews on my TikTok. Uh, I would get like, you know, on average 200 views per short, short form preview. That was just pretty good for me. It's not a lot for, you know, the average content creator, but that 200 extra views padded my review coverage score a little bit so I have a better chance of getting keys. Um, that's why I did it. I was like, it's not worth it. <laughs> it's not worth it to make content on a platform that's mostly trash. And let's say I got big. I wouldn't, but let's say I got big and I attracted people to the platform. Um, they would inevitably start watching trash because... The platform is full of trash and you can only hold the person's attention for a minute at most. You can do more than, I think, 10 minutes max on TikTok now, but no one's going to watch those long form videos <laughs> or very few people, I should say. So I was like, you know what? The ethics and morals of it, like you can disagree, you know, you can agree. I don't care because this is what I feel and what I want to do. So other people's opinions are irrelevant to to what I'm doing because it's just for me you know like I'm not telling you guys to do the same thing I'm not telling you guys to delete your TikTok accounts or stop watching it if you have one and you enjoy it that's good for you man do what you want but anyways the most important aspect as to why I'm doing all this crazy stuff I know it's a little disjointed how I talk but hopefully y'all can follow along a little bit that's how I think that's why my mind is a little uh yeah, it goes places. Anyways, it's spite. So I'm tired of these companies uh, telling me what to do, what I can't do, when I should have ownership over a certain portion or aspect of the service or product I'm using. And so I'm like, you know what? If you're going to treat me like crap, screw you. I'm not going to use your service. So <laughs> so I'm, I'm getting rid of Discord. I might keep it for a few friends who don't want to use IRC. My, my alternatives right now are IRC and uh, Steam Chat. The Steam Chat rooms are actually pretty okay. I wish they had a little bit more permissions, um, but it's getting pretty close to Discord. So, uh, you know, I, I don't mind Steam in that it's still a corporation. It's still profit-oriented. There's a bunch of stuff they do where I'm like, eh, you know, it's not so good, like how they monetize the Dota 2 Battle Pass. I'm like, oh, this, is, <laughs> this doesn't feel good. It feels like it's catering towards whales. But, um, yeah, like, they're doing a good bunch of good, good work on the Linux gaming front. So I'm really glad they made the Steam Deck. I'm a huge fan. I don't use it a lot, but I really like the fact they made such a quality piece of hardware. And they focus on, you know, letting the user repair it or upgrade parts. They work with iFixit. I'm really happy they are kind of making Linux gaming popular now. I mean, it was, there was a scene for it, but like it wasn't this big, you know, thanks to the Steam Deck and Steam pushing it. Uh, I really hate using Windows. I, I <laughs> it's because of Microsoft. Like each operating system that Windows releases gets worse and worse. 
Uh, it takes away more user control, user privacy. It feels like it's like a a free to play mobile game. You know, there's ads popping up everywhere. I'm like, ah, oh, now you gotta go Google and search how to disable stuff you don't want to see. They're kind of building it into the core of the operating system or Microsoft Edge, so you can't disable certain parts. But yeah, it's just you know, don't get don't even get me started on Samsung phones. All right, I don't have iPhones, but I have a Samsung phone, and the level of like invasive stuff they have on there is insane i was trying to remove everything one time and some certain apps you just can't really remove or it's not recommended to remove because they interface with other apps so if you remove that app or the app it interfaces with oh it's constantly checking for the app so it'll drain power faster and i'm like what the, what is this i don't even use this app i never asked for it why is it on my phone that's why i want to get you know install a custom ROM on my phone and just and anyways that's another topic but going back it's fine so I'm tired of these companies telling me what to do so I've been deleting all these accounts where I'm like I'm never going back so after seeing how Blizzard treats its customers with Overwatch 2 and Diablo 4 I used to be a big Blizzard fan uh, I used to play Starcraft Brood War way back in the day I, I enjoyed Warcraft 3 a lot and Frozen Throne but I played Dota 1 most of the time and yeah, it just got worse and worse and worse. And I'm like, I'm done. I, I don't care, you know, if other people are playing the game. I don't care if there's good aspects to it. The company itself, the core of it is rotten and it won't change. Even with the Microsoft buyout, it's not going to change. So I deleted my account. I have so many skins <laughs> and Overwatch on that. Um... Yeah, so many memories, I just don't care. It's, I'm at the point where I'm like, hey, you need to start catering toward me or I'm just going to move on. And for for them, I'm, I, I don't matter because I'm just one consumer, right? Well, imagine if everyone did that, then they would start changing their tune. And, and that's what it takes. So when people stop playing Diablo 4 in droves, uh, they're like, oh, we, uh-oh, we got to make some changes. And then when people stop playing World of Warcraft retail in droves, they're like, uh-oh, <laughs> we got to make some changes. So this is what it takes. And the problem is people have very short memories and they're willing to forgive these corporations mistreating them and, and, and actively throw money at them. And that's, that's mind-boggling. But again, y'all do whatever you want. This is just for me. So yeah, I'm deleting all my accounts. Another thing is I'm not really present in the present. Because you're always checking these things. You're like, I gotta check my notifications on social media, email, you know, games. You're always playing games, consuming content. You're not really in the world, you know? And I understand some people's lives are tough or undesirable. And some people's lives are really, really rough. But, you know, <laughs> there's a lot of good things out there that we're missing because we're not actually living our life, you know, in the real world, we're always consuming something, living in a fantasy world. And uh, yeah, I don't want to do that anymore. Um, yeah, there's, there's a lot I want to do before I die. And you never know when you're going to die. And your life can be very short. You, you never know. You can't control it. So I'm like, I don't want to waste what little life I got, you know. <laughs> you know, playing EVE Online for forever, you know, until server downtime. That's what I used to do way back. but. Anyways, just a little rant here, but yeah, I'm looking into installing Linux. If y'all got recommendations for distros, let me know. I just, I don't really do a lot with my computer. I go on the web to check emails. I might watch a few YouTube videos, mostly like Google stuff. I'm really into uh, handhelds right now. Like, you know, the little Chinese emulation handhelds, like the Retroid Pocket 4 came out. Uh, Retro Pocket 2S Metal Edition came out. Mew Mini Flip is going to come out soon. I think the Aya Neo Pocket Damage is coming out soon as well. The Ambernic RG35XX Plus Horizontal Format is coming out. Um, <laughs> what else? Yeah, like I, w I watch a lot of Retro Game Core with uh, Russ. I like his channel a lot. Uh, Taki Udon does pretty good videos as well. I'm sure there are a lot of channels that do a great job. I just don't know of them because they don't show up when I, when I search this stuff. But yeah, I've been going through all the subreddits. You know, was it the SBC Gaming subreddit, the MiU subreddit, Ambernick? 
you know, I, I've been looking at the Pow Kitties, the, uh, what else? The Odin, the Aintech, I don't know how you pronounce it. There's so many companies. And it's so cool. I really like it. And it's not like I want to play games on it all the time. I just really like these devices. And I think there's a market for them in the future to be mainstream. Uh, like just like how Steam Deck really made it kind of mainstream in the US. It was mainstream in other worlds before, you know, other parts of the world. You know, uh, like the GPD-1.4, I think was huge. INEO was pretty big. You know, handheld computing was a thing because in other countries, people mostly game on their phones. And so, you know, having a little computer the size of a, I guess, not really a phone because it's kind of too big, but, <laughs> you know, people would spend a lot of money on their phones. So having it like a portable device, you know, made sense. Whereas in the U.S., people kind of focus on like having a desktop or maybe a laptop. And so I think, I don't know, I, I, I kind of want to see more portable handhelds coming from companies and, and they're coming out. So. ROG Ally is pretty okay, and the Lenovo Legion Go is pretty okay as well. Um, I think we're starting to see more companies get into it. Uh, but yeah, I, I want to see like the vertical handhelds, you know, you know, the cheaper ones that can emulate up to. Well, my dream would be a vertical handheld with joysticks that can play PS2 games. Um, yeah, a small form factor, you know. I know there's a lot of horizontal ones, but I want a small vertical one. Anyways. What a, what a random video. <laughs> That's going to be it, fellas. I'll probably make a few more of these, but I'm taking a break from games coverage. Um, oh, yeah, my Invincible video did pretty okay. I don't know why. I, just, I looked at their traffic. I couldn't figure it out, but I think I got a thousand views on that, and it just died all of a sudden. So whatever. Hopefully anyone that watches this, I hope you get the feel that uh, I'm not really trying to make content. It's more like, because, you know, I don't edit this a lot. I might, like, make some cuts where I pause talking too much and it's a lot too awkward. Or I might clean up the audio a little bit. But, yeah, like, I'm not trying to make content. Um, I don't know. When I, when I like, I struggle with this thought because I want to do better on YouTube. Because I want to make money. <laughs> but like, I, I, I don't know. Like when you do stuff to make money, like it just feels cringe when I see other channels. Like I, I don't want to watch it because it doesn't feel like it was made because the person wanted to make that. You know, like even if it's bad, <laughs> you know, I feel that's what YouTube should be. And now like there's this really high expectation for production level and like just everything just more polish and stuff but that's not what i want to make it would feel ingenuine disingenuous there we go <laughs> it would feel disingenuous and not real um i'm trying to figure out like my voice where like i, I figure out what i want to make and how i want to make it and why but so far this is it this and games coverage but yeah games coverage i'm taking a break for a little bit so if anyone sends me keys i might play it on stream but you know, I'm not going to make the YouTube previews and make articles and podcast episodes and, uh, uh, you know, short form previews and it's a lot of work and uh, I just want to break. <laughs> um, but these type of videos, eh, you know, just my thoughts. I'm, I'm putting them out there. Uh, but yeah, it's going to be it. Uh, gonna Yeah, I'm going to release it whenever I finish recording, but yeah. It's going to be Christmas soon. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year if I don't see y'all. And I'll catch you guys next time.